Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another afternoon here in the asylum. Last time, I let you follow along as I rebuilt the front brake master cylinder on this 78 Yamaha SR500. And that worked good. We got brake function back, but now the front brake caliper drags. It keeps sticking. So we're going to pull that off and clean it out and put new seals and gaskets in it. So follow along with me. There's a couple of steps you have to do here. First thing you'll have to do is if you'll come around to the back side of the brake caliper, and I will take the camera over here just a second so you can see where I'm working at. Even if I don't put it down where you can see the screw. There is a small cross head screw right here on the back side. Go ahead and pull that out. Without that out, you can't get the brake pads off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it off because it's just easier while it's all mounted together. Set that on my workbench. Now let's move back to the other side. This is really getting to be a nice little bike. As I showed you in the first episode this year, it runs good. Everything works well as far as starting goes. I got plans to make a mild mid 80s style custom out of it. I was looking around and there's so many ways you can go. There's so many different parts available for these things. You can build cafe racers, street trackers. Pretty much anything you want out of an SR500. But what I want is just an enhanced SR500, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this bike, what I would have done to it back in 1988 or 89. But anyhow, first of all, let's pull this brake hose loose. I'm actually going to explode the brake caliper by using the master cylinder. But first we got to get it loose. So we have this single bolt right here which takes 12 millimeter socket. And this is the slider. Then this pulls out like this, just like so. Let me go ahead and check out these brake shoes pads while I'm in here. They actually look fairly decent, have plenty of pad left on them. So for right now, and they appear to be a semi-metallic pad anyway. So for now, I'm just going to reuse these. Maybe if I find the braking is inadequate later, I'll upgrade. But the truth of the matter is, it's a 500 single, very slow revving. It's not likely to ever be that much of a problem getting it to stop as long as the brakes are in good condition. I'm going to just set, literally set these right back into place. Now what I like to do is I'm pumping out the piston I like to put something across here just in case there's too much pressure and it sticks for some reason comes flying out across tries to fly out across the room you just need to be very careful and make sure that your fingers don't get in the way As you can see, the piston is moving slowly outward. Probably a good idea to check the brake fluid level occasionally while you're doing this, but I'm not. I'm just watching it. Oh, 
Hey, well. Now it's all the way up against that piece, thin piece of wood. Paint stick makes a good piece to do that because it pulls it out, allows it to pull almost all the way out to the point where all you then have to do is pull out the piston. Which the piston actually doesn't look too bad, it's dirty. I'll clean that up shortly. Now we'll go ahead and take the brake hose loose and take the caliper to our workbench. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a second and go clean all this stuff up. It's mostly just dirty inside where it was sticking. This screw right here, this is the slider right here. This is also stuck. That will have to be cleaned out and broken free. And then after that, it'll be a matter of putting in the new seals and reassembly. So I'm going to the parts washer and I'll see you all back at the workbench. Okay, as you can see, we've got all the parts all cleaned up here. We're getting ready to fix the uh, brake caliper. Everything's cleaned out. Piston cleaned up very well. It's almost, not quite perfect, but almost perfect. It's definitely good enough to reuse. So the first thing we want to do is go in here and remove this O-ring right here. Carefully pull that out. Okay, these O-rings are beveled, and there's a certain way they go in. It'll probably be hard to tell on this camera. But you want it so that it is beveled so that the wider part is toward the inside of the... So that it is rubbing on the caliper like this. You want it where when you put it in the groove that it sticks out more on that side of the piston. These kits come with a little bit of grease it's made for brake parts so you put a little bit of that on the seal slide it down into its groove like so. As you can see there, it's sitting in the groove. And take the piston and just kind of wipe around it. You don't need to put a bunch of grease on it or anything. Matter of fact, some kits don't come with any grease. In those cases, you would just lightly lubricate everything with brake fluid. Now, we take this top seal and slide it over the brake piston. 
It's got a groove that it fits in on the piston. Set it in place. It has to be lined up perfectly straight. This is a very precision fit. And it will slide down in there quite easily once you get it going straight. Now there's a snap ring here that retains this outer seal. And it snaps into place like so around the outside edge of it. There's a little retainer lip right up under there that you can't see once you put the seal on, but it holds it in place. Slide the new cap down over the bleeder screw. We just run it down. We won't tighten it up yet. I made sure that these came apart. And that this slide moves freely. I put some light oil in it. I didn't bother with pulling these apart because my kit doesn't have new ones. And if I had torn them, I wouldn't have a replacement. And then snap the retainer back in for the brake shoes, pads. Okay, now it's time to go put this back on. And just like magic, we're back down here at the front wheel. And we're getting ready to slide this back into place. Make sure the piston is fully compressed. Slide this back over. This bolt started. Go ahead and run that in now. Okay, and you can go to the other side and put the crosshead screw back in on the back. Tighten that down good. You have your washers and all back in your banjo boat in the right place. Now 
Normally I would replace the crush, say replace the crush washer on the banjos. But these are brand new brake lines and brand new crush washers. They've only been tightened up once. Long enough to get this thing together and pop this brake piston out. So I think we're good with that. Yeah, make sure that's good and tight. Put the rubber sleeve back around the brake line. Push it back into place. Okay, and there we have Now let's go get the brake bleeding stuff. Okay, I'm back. We're ready to bleed brakes now. I'm going to be using a Mighty Vac brake bleeder. You want to make sure that you've got plenty of brake fluid in the master cylinder and that you have this cracked open just a little bit. We'll let it vacuum on that for a little while. Watch the brake fluid in the reservoir. You don't want to pump it in. Let it bleed the brakes all over again. Ah, now we see. We're getting the air bubbles up. I don't know if you can see the air bubbles in the brake fluid or not, but it's pulling them through. While that is working, I'm going to go top off the reservoir again. Just to be sure. This is a whole lot easier way to waste a whole lot less brake fluid to manual bleeding. There we go. Fluid was coming through clean. Now I'm going to unhook this. Got to pump up the caliper. Just a little bit, because once you have the uh, piston compressed all the way in, you will have to pump it to get it to come back out, even without air in the system. But that's got a good brake feel at the caliper right there. Let's lift this thing up a little bit. Get the front wheel off the ground. Burn the front wheel, brake works, and it releases. 
It's just as important for these brakes to release it is, as it is for them to catch. You don't want a dragging brake shoe. Well, that pretty much concludes this. All we have to do is clean up the tools, put everything away, and then this bike is pretty much ready for some riding now, just like it is. The engine runs good. The pet cock is still messed up, but I can put it on prime and run the engine that way. So I'll be rebuilding that and replacing other odds and ends. Probably the next thing I'll do to it will be to install a set of mirrors. That way I can act it's actually safe and street legal then. So until next time, happy wrenching. <laughs>